Hello everyone, let me bring you a quick tutorial on remote debugging using WinDebug. Okay, so before we get into the tutorial, let me just explain a few reasons why you would want to learn remote debugging or even use remote debugging. You see, in on-premise development, especially in native development, you might have executables running on a test system, production system, or even on your customer side, in which you can't actually access your development environment. So in this kind of scenario, if you want to debug the live executable, it is really troublesome to try to get a full development environment on that machine. If you were skillful in remote debugging or want to give remote debugging a try, that could be an option. Because with remote debugging, what you're doing is you're putting a debugger on that machine which is very minimal and you're using a development environment that you have to connect to that machine to debug the executables. This gives you a quick way to debug an executable running on a machine that may not be easy to debug by copying the executable down. I'll give you an example. If you're using a Windows Server as your development production system and you're using a Windows 10 laptop as your development environment, it is productive to remote debug into the Windows Server instead of trying to replicate the software that is running on the Windows Server on your Windows 10. For this tutorial, um, I'm going to keep it kind of short. So I'm just going to show one example, which is the live debugging with uh, WinDebug. There's a few other models in which WinDebug can debug a remote system, like for example, using a remote stub. But I'm going to keep that for a future video. Now, alternatively, Visual Studio also has a remote stub debugging environment where you can copy a remote debugger to a target machine. I'm not going to show that in this video as well because that is uh, more towards remote stop debugging. I'll keep that for a future video. For this video, I'm going to stick to the concept that you're going to live debug using two wind debugs. Wind debug, remote debugging is really flexible and there's a lot of options. The model in which I'm going to show is to use two wind debugs to debug the application. What we're going to do is we're going to take one wind debug and put it on the target machine. And WinDebug doesn't actually require an installation. We can actually just copy the files over. I'll show that in a future video or put the in the description below some links to how, how you can do that. But what we are going to do is we're going to put WinDebug on the target machine. We're going to run WinDebug attached to the process. And then we're going to tell WinDebug to open a network connection so that we can connect with a separate WinDebug on the development machine. So this way, the two WinDebugs are cooperating with each other and they are working together in order to debug the executable. Let me start first by switching to my WinDebug. With my WinDebug, this is my remote WinDebug. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to launch an executable. And um, there we are. So it's launched an executable. This WinDebug represents my remote machine. So this is the WinDebug that's going to attach to the process and it is the one that is going to host the debugging session. So how do I open a host is on the prompt, I'm just going to type server. And this means that I'm going to tell WinDebug to become the server that is going to host the connection. I'm going to choose to use a TCP connection. You can choose to use a name pipe or you can choose to use more advanced techniques. I will put a link in the description below about all the techniques you can use in order to try to get WinDebug to host a connection. But I'm going to use a TCP socket. So what I do is I just type server TCP and I'm just going to give it a port number and the port number doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to choose to use port 5000. This port has been enabled by my firewall. The first time you type this command, you probably will get prompted by Windows to say, hey, you're using a port which we don't know. Just let this port through. You can use any port number, there's no restriction. So just choose a port number that you know can be opened on the target machine that you can connect from your development machine. Now, when I press enter, what it's going to say is it's going to say server started, client can connect, and it's going to give a set of strings. So what this means is that if the client connects on TCP port 5000, it can reach this debugger from a remote machine. Now, it can also use a name pipe. And I will leave 
some instructions in the description below about how to connect to a namepipe, but I will be using the TCP connection for now. Okay, so let me switch to my development environment so that I can use the second WinDebug to connect to the first WinDebug. So let me do that right now. So here we have a different WinDebug. I'm using an older x86 WinDebug that doesn't even match the bit type, but it doesn't really matter because when I connect my remote WinDebug, this WinDebug that I'm using is not actually debugging the executable, it's just sending remote commands to the actual debugger, which is the debugger we just started earlier. So only one debugger needs to actually be connected to the process. All the other WinDebugs are just there to view the screen. So let's get into it. We start by going to File and then go to Connect to Remote Session. And what it will do is it will give a dialog that asks for the connection string. So the connection string that we want to insert is we want to say TCP colon port equals 5000 server equals MSI, which is the name of my machine. If I do that and I press enter, what I get is I get a screen in which it connects through the network to my remote server. Now this screen that I have here, this view is exactly the same as the remote server. Now, at this point, I have the remote debugger attached and I can use either WinDebug to debug the executable. What's exactly happening is that the WinDebug that started the server command is actually attached to the process. So that WinDebug requires the PDBs. So I've already set up that this executable has PDBs in the same folder. So I'm not going to show how to set up PDBs uh, in WinDebug. I have other videos in this playlist in which you can view to see how I set up the PDBs. But uh, you don't need to set up PDBs on both WinDebugs. What I am going to do is I'm going to set up the source code path on the uh, development WinDebug. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to show one of the benefits of remote debugging. What I'm going to essentially do is I'm going to set the source code path on one of the WinDebugs but not on the other so that when I hit a breakpoint you can see that one of the WinDebugs is able to show the source code but the other one is not able to show the source code. This is a very common scenario that requires win uh, remote debugging in which the source code is available on one computer but the executable is running on a different computer. If you set up WinDebug this way, it is possible to see the source code on the machine that has it while it's debugging the executable on the machine that doesn't have the source code. Now I'm going to run the application. I'm just going to put uh, G and run. And what this does is the now the executable is running on the remote machine. If I switch to the WinDebug of the remote machine, I see that the executable is running. The debuggy is running and it's busy. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a breakpoint and I'm going to show the benefit of having the source code on one of the WinDebugs. So let me switch back to my to my remote WinDebug over here. I'm going to set a breakpoint. Now I know that this executable has a method called handle leak. So I'm going to set a breakpoint in there. Okay, I'm going to clear the screen and set a breakpoint real quick. So with this uh, breakpoint, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger this breakpoint on the remote machine and I'm going to show you the difference between the screens of the remote WinDebug and on the development WinDebug. So let's resume the application and then switch to the remote machine. Let me switch now to my remote machine and trigger the breakpoint. As you can see on my screen that the breakpoint has been triggered and the source code has been opened and it shows where the breakpoint is. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to the view of the WinDebug that is running on the remote machine and you can see that on that WinDebug screen the breakpoint has been hit but there is no source code. The reason for that is because the remote machine doesn't actually have access to the source code. Now this is just one of the many techniques that you can use to remote debug. I'm just showing uh, one simple benefit which is showing uh, source code. But there are many many other benefits to remote debugging. For example, you can even push PDBs. Uh, that is a bit more advanced. I'll make a video in the future about pushing PDBs. 
But I think that um, at this moment, uh, this is probably enough to get you started on remote debugging uh, using WinDebug. Uh, do give it a try and uh, if your networking doesn't work, just try other techniques. I'll put some links in the description below on other kinds of networking that you can use to try to get remote debugging to work. With that, I think um, we'll just end the video here. It's probably long enough. Um, do tell me what you think about uh, these videos. Uh, do tell me what kind of information you'd like to know about WinDebug. I did get a couple of messages about helping uh, debug memory dumps. I'll make videos in the future once I get to the solution of those memory dumps. So definitely stick on the channel to, to watch those videos. But if you do get into trouble trying to win debug, uh, trying to remote debug, do let me know. Contact me on Twitter, contact me on Facebook. I, I will answer questions here and there. But do give it a try. Remote debugging is not the easiest thing to get into, but it is extremely beneficial because now you can connect your development environment to any production environment and still be very, very productive. With that, I think I'll end the video here. Definitely subscribe and hit that bell icon and you will get notified of future videos. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Give me a thumbs down if you don't like the video. And definitely tell me what you think about uh, WinDebug and definitely tell me what kind of videos you'd like to see in future. Anyway, I'm High Voice signing out.